We're rolling. Uh, hold on. Tusks, tusks. Hair, hair. Move the hair. All right, sorry. Oops. Why did I click register? centuries, some artists have created worlds of pure fantasy, while others have pictured the real world around them. At the beginning of the 20th century, some painters and poets began to feel that realistic or representational art was not as real as it seemed, because it ignored dreams and feelings the shadowy parts of human experience that take place in the subconscious mind. They also felt that pure fantasy lacked meaning because it ignored the world around us. These 20th century artists attempted to create a new realism by combining elements of both the everyday outer world and the inner world of the subconscious mind. They called it surrealism, a French word meaning super-realism. Some composers moved by these same ideas introduced sounds from everyday life, popular songs, jazz, scraps of conversation, even sound effects into their compositions. Surrealism grew out of many complex events that changed people's views and attitudes toward themselves and the world around them. A look at some of these events helps to explain how this change in the idea of reality came about. In the late 19th century, people thought that reality was what you could see, hear, smell, taste, and touch, and understand by logic. In the arts, a movement developed known as Impressionism. Painters recorded their impressions of what they saw around them. Impressionist composers wrote music that included their impressions of real sounds, such as the sea. But there were others expressing different ideas, ideas that would later be adopted by the Surrealists. The young poet Arthur Rimbaud, for example, rejected the belief that reality was so simple and logical. He urged artists to seek new visions by freeing their subconscious minds, even at the risk of mental disorder. Another poet, Lautréamont, also advocated irrationality. His images were strange. The chance encounter of a sewing machine and an umbrella on a dissecting table. The playwright Alfred Jarry was the first of those sharing these new ideas to reach a wider public. His play, Ubu Roi, was brought to the stage in 1896 with music by Claude Terrasse. infantile, violent, gluttonous, and obscene, an eruption of subconscious forces. The audience was startled, reacting with rage, laughter, catcalls, and fistfights. The 20th century had arrived a few years ahead of schedule. In 1900, Sigmund Freud published his first paper on psychoanalysis. 
It indicated that the conscious mind was influenced by forces buried in a subconscious dream world. The human mind was not entirely logical. Irrationality was a real aspect of life. Five years later, Albert Einstein published his first paper on the theory of relativity, disclosing that the visible world depends on an invisible world of energy. What we see is only a small part of reality. Artists' perceptions were affected by these new ideas. In 1907, Picasso began a revolution in the manner of representing the visible world. In Cubism, Reality was viewed from many angles at once. <laughs> Igor Stravinsky's Rite of Spring was performed. Raw sound was being liberated freed from melody and harmony. The physical environment was also changing. Nature, which for centuries had been the source of inspiration for the artist, had been invaded by the machine. Painters and poets who fell in love with the machine age called themselves Futurists. They constructed noise machines and gave concerts of whistles, groans, screeches, and explosions. Others turned inward to a world of dream. World War I broke out. Many artists felt that their work was meaningless in the face of such total destruction. The actuality of life no longer matched old forms of art and culture. Europe was demoralized. In Berlin, Zurich, Paris, and New York, artists began a violent rebellion. It was called Dada, a name picked at random, meaning nothing. We must affirm the individual after the madness produced by bandits who rend one another and destroy the centuries. There is a great negative work of destruction to be done. We must sweep and clean, or painting is useless. Let it then be a monstrosity that frightens servile minds. We need works that are strong, precise, and forever beyond understanding. Logic is always wrong. It is a centipede, stifling intelligence. Dadaists recited poetry of meaningless words. They exhibited ready-made objects in mockery of art. They created anti-paintings with material cut from newspapers, textbooks, and catalogs. They painted images of impractical machinery. Marble sugar cubes were placed in a bird cage and entitled, Why Not Sneeze? Music and poetry were written by shaking up notes or words in a bag and copying them out at random. Concerts were given by playing typewriters and banging tin cans. Collages were made from refuse. Compositions were made of torn paper arranged by chance. Drawings were made by allowing the hand to follow subconscious impulses, a process called automatism. Painters invited accident by painting in the dark. For some, Dada was a lifestyle of total rebellion. In New York, Arthur Cravan 
cursing his audience while delivering a lecture, began to undress and was stopped by the police. In Paris, Jacques Vacher caused a riot during a theater intermission. He was dressed as an English officer and waving a pistol threatened to shoot up the audience. In 1917, the ballet Parade was performed, written by Jean Cocteau, costumes and decor by Picasso, and music by Eric Satie. Picasso placed fantasy and reality side by side. Satie included sounds from the real world, a typewriter, lottery wheel, Foghorn and pistol. <laughs> to describe Parade's combination of reality and unreality, the poet Guillaume Apollinaire coined a new word surrealism. Soon, Dada and called it the negative phase of Surrealism, had spent itself. Painters and poets were seeking a more positive direction. André Breton, a poet trained in psychoanalysis, experimented with automatic writing to release subconscious images. Foul night, night of flowers, night of death rattles. Deaf knight whose hand is a contemptible kite held back by threads. Countryside of red and white bones, what have you done with your unspeakably filthy trees? Your arborescent... In 1924, Breton published a manifesto. He defined surrealism as automatism, the means to express the actual functioning of thought. Uh, you are killing me, water bandit, that sharpens your knives in my eyes. My curses will follow you like a frighteningly pretty child who shakes her broom of straw. At the end of each branch, there is a star. The marvelous is always beautiful. In fact, only the marvelous is beautiful. And renegades everywhere. Renegades with purple sleeves. Renegades with current eyes, with hen's hair. I believe in the resolution of dream and reality into a kind of absolute reality, a surreality. A number of Dadaists joined Breton to investigate surrealism. Their aim of bringing art closer to life became more specific. Real life existed in the subconscious. Breton described automatic writing. Put yourself in a passive state. Write quickly, without any preconceived subject, in the absence of any control exercised by reason. Automatic drawing, like automatic writing, allowed subconscious images to appear. My wife, with her wood fire hair, with her thoughts of summer lightning, in a trance-like state, painters let their brushes wander freely over the surface. With her mouth, with the fragrance of stars. After images appeared, they were clarified with consciously added detail. With her tongue of amber and ground glass. The tongue of a doll with eyes that open and shut. Each tongue is incredible. Pictures were developed by rubbing graphite on paper placed over objects or textured material. Or by scraping paint across canvas laid over textured surfaces and allowing images to suggest themselves, as one might see a face in patterned wallpaper. As forms began to emerge, details were added to clarify the suggested images. Paint was squashed onto canvas under smooth surfaced material like glass, 
or floated on water and transferred to canvas. Chance, coincidence, accident was sought after. A Bureau of Surrealist Research was opened where trance states were investigated, and chance was explored through group games. A word or part of a drawing or collage was put on paper. The paper folded over so that it couldn't be seen, then passed in succession to others. The first sentence read, the exquisite corpse will drink the young wine. Experiments were done in all types of juxtaposition, combining unrelated objects or ideas. Collage was the ideal medium. Images resembling collage were painted with realistic detail. Ordinary images were placed in illogical contexts. Harlem jazz was played in the Parisian ballet. Humor was an element of juxtaposition. The wrong thing in the wrong place at the wrong time. Humor became a surrealist technique, even a lifestyle. Philippe Soupault roamed Paris, entering countless buildings to ask if Philippe Soupault lived there. The surrealists adopted the Marx Brothers. Charlie Chaplin. In all their experiments with techniques and ideas, the Surrealists were always searching for the marvelous. Art was merely a byproduct. Love, the ultimate experience of the marvelous, was a surrealist theme expressed especially in poetry. But above all, the surrealists believed in a total liberation of the mind. The mind which plunges into surrealism relives with glowing excitement the best part of its childhood. It is childhood that comes closest to one's real life. Children are weaned on the marvels. By the early 1920s, many painters were no longer satisfied with copying the world around them. Reality was more complex, and artists such as Juan Miró were seeking new ways to reflect it. The poet André Breton described the problem. The traditional model taken from the outside world no longer exists. The model that is to follow taken from the inside world has not yet been discovered. Miro, a Spanish painter, set out to discover it. He moved to Paris in 1920 and joined the Surrealists in 1924. Miro began experimenting with automatism, painting without a plan, letting his brush be guided by his impulses. Images began to appear and he gave them names. Love. 
person throwing a stone at a bird. Man and woman in front of a pile of excrement. Andre Masson started with automatic drawing. and then developed methods of applying paint quickly. I begin without an image or plan in mind, but just draw or paint rapidly according to my impulses. Gradually, I see suggestions of figures or objects, and then consciously encourage these to Giorgio de Chirico's characteristic work preceded Surrealism, but provided a source of inspiration. He painted dreamlike scenes by combining unrelated images and unrelated surroundings. Chirico's realistic style of painting, called illusionism, influenced a number of Surrealists, including René Magritte. In my pictures, I show objects when we never find them. The lizards we see in our homes and on our faces, I found more eloquent in the sky habitat. A woman's body floating above the city was an initiation for me into some of love's secrets. and automatism. And frequently combined both techniques. Tanguy filled dreamscapes with organic stone-like forms. Picasso was closely associated with the Surrealists, though his art was never really Surrealist. However abstract, it was derived from a vision of the external world rather than the internal world, which, as Breton said, was discovered with the eyes closed. Salvador Dali kept his eyes strictly closed. My whole ambition is to materialize the images of irrationality with the utmost precision, and so that the world of imagination may be objectively evident. Dali employed all the illusionist techniques of academic painting to achieve this goal.
He exhibited a taxi with interior plumbing that caused rain to fall on mannequins covered with live snails. In 1928, Dali and Luis Buñuel made a film entitled An Andalusian Dog. Film was the ideal medium to discredit reality. Not only could images within a scene be combined illogically, but unrelated scenes could be spliced together, jarring the viewer's train of associations. Bunuel and Dali made Large Door, the Golden Age. Its theme was the frustration of love by an unfeeling society. Society retaliated. The authorities banned the film. Eric Satie, the composer closest to the French surrealists, wrote the music for Relâche, a multimedia ballad, containing a film, Entrax. The film combined frenzied movement with plodding slow motion. Satie juxtaposed contrasting segments of music. Previously, in his campaign against serious music, Satie had used elements of jazz in the music hall, as well as typewriters and pistols. But on track was part of a new phase of anti-art, furniture music, to be lived with like furniture, rather than listened to as art. We want music to satisfy useful needs. Art has no part in such needs. Furniture music fills the same role as light and heat. Once when furniture music was played during the theater intermission, Satie jumped up and urged the audience not to listen. Satie's disciples were among the foremost French composers of the time. They included Mio, Ori, Aniga, and Poulain. The group collaborated with the poet Jean Cocteau to produce Les Mariés de la Tour Eiffel. The newlyweds of the Eiffel Tower developed the use of unreal reality which Cocteau and Satie had begun in Parade. At a wedding on the Eiffel Tower, a photographer says, watch the birdie, an ostrich emerges from the camera, followed by a lion. Who eats a general. The music was a parody of the commonplace, the music hall, the circus, and a funeral march. Georges Ory composed the music for Cocteau's film, The Blood of a Poet. Concrete sounds accompany unreal images, the sound of an airplane with the image of an angel. André Soury, the composer of the Belgian Surrealist group, did film scores by combining formal music Wagner's Parsifal, for example, with tribal chants. Other composers not connected with surrealism used surrealist devices. Bartok, for example. This section of music has been described as a piece of torn bus ticket stuck into the middle of an oil painting.
Schoenberg did something similar even before surrealism. During the Second World War, Surrealism immigrated to the United States as artists fled Europe. Avant-garde American painters like Archil Gorky, who joined the exiled Surrealists, adopted automatism. Jackson Pollock, borrowing from Max Ernst, poured paint directly onto canvas. The term action painting was coined. Surrealism, after giving birth to the new movement, began to decline. After the war, the Surrealists returned to Paris. accident and automatism became the center of the art world. As Pollock began to pour paint, John Cage, who had also been in close contact with the Surrealists, began to use chants to compose music. In music of changes, he threw dice to determine the pitch, duration, and dynamics of each note. Surrealists had used chance to eliminate conscious control. Cage went further. He wanted to eliminate unconscious control as well, to make music as impersonal as nature. Chance composition led to chance performance. Available form by Earl Brown was motivated by the changing forms of Alexander Calder's mobiles. Though each unit of the composition is planned, they are combined in different ways during performance. Music is given the unpredictability of life. After a decade of action painting, Dada re-emerged. Art was brought back to the real world. Robert Rauschenberg inserted objects from real life directly into his canvases. Even a bed. When Rauschenberg painted a series of completely white canvases, John Cage's composition for piano, four minutes, 33 seconds, was performed, during which the pianist sits at the piano without playing. Major's intention was to replace the formal art of the concert hall with sounds natural to the environment. The ultimate extension of Satie's furniture music. Neo-Dadaism became pop art as painting was invaded by images from popular culture. From the visual environment of a consumer-oriented society. Not content with replacing art by mass-produced objects and environmental noise, anti-art persisted. Jean Tanguy's self-destructing sculpture, Homage to New York, 
destroyed itself at its unveil. John Cage composed Harpsichord using a randomly programmed computer. Then randomly juxtaposed the results with music by Mozart, Chopin, and others. Artists today are ransacking Dada and Surrealism for new ways to break the boundaries between art and life. Assembly, conceptual art, kinetic art, minimal art, happenings, earth works, even graffiti. Words of Yves Roi still echo in the background. Orange drum heart. We should never have knocked everything down. If we hadn't meant to destroy the ruins too. Yay, happy serial estate, Bobby. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yay.